Drive. It's now time for the Southern Elite Cavaliers Coaches Show with head coach Michael McClure. We now take you to Mike Fowler, your host for tonight's program. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Southern Elite Cavalier Football and the Mike McClure Coaches Show. I'm Mike Fowler. I'll be your host as we talk Cavalier football and visit with Cavalier coach Mike McClure. I want to thank our sponsors for helping you bring our show each Tuesday night on 105.5 FM WFJA. Wilkinson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Fix-It Plumbing, Farm Bureau of Tramway, Jones Printing Company, and Brick Capital Video. Tonight's show will be rebroadcast at 6.30 this Friday night prior to our 7.30 game on 95.1 FM and 10.50 AM WWGP. Video of our coaches' show will be posted on the WFJA Facebook page each Wednesday by noon. I look forward to talking with Cavalier coach Mike McClure tonight and bringing you exciting Southern League Cavalier football. We're going to take a short break and hear from our great sponsors. We'll be right back with Coach McClure right after these messages. Coaches Show Sponsors Wilkinson Chevrolet Domino's Farm Bureau Tramway Sheriff Tracy Carter Fix-It Plumbing Jones Printing Company Brick Capital Video Welcome back to the Coach Michael Four Show. Coach, welcome back in for another show. It seems like we're you know we hear it goes so fast. It seems does. like we're just here. It does. After Fridays, it rolls back around and quick, real quick. So yeah, it sure does. It sure does. Here. Well, glad to have you. And again, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, last Friday night's game. Uh, it was a home uh, home game, a whiteout game. We want to thank all those that took part in doing the whiteout. Uh, honored the seniors that night uh, in a game that uh, Scotland County came to town for the very first time. It was our Sand Hills 3A, 4A opener for, mm-hmm. for the Cavaliers and a game that just didn't go our way as we went down to Scotland 42 to nothing. And, coaches, we were talking earlier, um, despite the score, the team played great. You know, and yeah. you, need, you need good play from offense, defense, and special teams to really have a good game. And one of those units was off on Friday. Yeah. But other than that, it was a good positive game. Yeah, as we've been talking about the whole time as a, as a team, it's complimentary football. And um, once we get that piece down where we're complimenting each other offensively, defensively, and in, in the kicking game, then we're definitely going to be looking at, a, at our first win. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if you look back at all the games, it's like one side's been real strong, the other side's been real weak and, um, you know, kind of hindering us from getting over that hump. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the plan is just to kind of put it all together and just play complimentary football is what we've been trying to do. But as far as uh, Friday went, um, I felt like we had a shot. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I tell this to anybody who asks me about the game, we definitely had a shot. Um, shot. And, um, you know, they were a little – they were a little. I believe they were a little shook mm-hmm. um, early in the game. You know, they they, they they realized that they was in for a dog fight. It's just we couldn't – we just couldn't finish. Um, you know, the special teams hurt us. Um, looking at the score, you know, the score says 42-0, mm-hmm. but we gave up 35 points uh, in special teams, in the right. special teams area. Um, you know, their opening drive is the only true drive that they had to work for mm-hmm. to get uh, seven points. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of our defense um, to come in and hold them to two, 260 total yards. Right. And, and they had been, you know, rushing – for for well more than what they rushed on us, so that was a positive sign. That's a, that's a bright spot mm-hmm. um, for our team and our guys defensively. Now are feeling confident that they can go out and they can play with everybody in the conference. They they understand that now, and which is what we've been trying to get to the, the, them to that point to understand. Right, and it's again like you said, the defense. You got to hand it to the defense because they came out, they got the ball to start the game, and they just went right down the field, run, 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 run until the last play. I think was the pass play mm-hmm. for the touchdown, uh, and then they tried the onside kick, um, which they did recover, but the penalty took it away from them. Yeah. Um, but um, you got to hand it to the defense. Came back, and then we're going to highlight some defense here in a little bit. But um, some of the one of the best, some of the best plays I saw in the season so far, either teams we played, and according to the Cavs, were some of those plays in the secondary. And, of course, we were able to pick off their quarterback three times. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, as me and the other coaches were talking, and you know, after the game and even into the weekend, if we play if we play how we play defensively, how we played Friday night earlier in the season, then our record would, would probably 
be a little different. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably definitely have a, a wind under our belt, but it's all a, a growing process. It's all pro a process the kids are, you know, finally becoming comfortable with things. And, you know, the two-week setback uh, due to COVID, right. you know, um, not, not to – say that that was the reason that we lost but you know it does play a factor in things as well sure and exactly and, and early i'm sorry mm -hmm. coming to the game you're you're regrouping what actually live action is all about you yeah. know after that two-week thing but you got to head to your staff and also the players themselves are just coming out and really playing a good game despite like you said the the, the mishaps on the special team unit that happened um but uh from start to finish i thought there were some good signs in that game especially on the defensive yeah. side of the yeah, ball it definitely sure. was and like i said the conference is uh, definitely a confidence booster for us. No, exactly right. So uh, with that being said, we'll move on to this week uh, in the um, uh, Sand Hills 3A Conference and take a quick look at the results uh, from last week. Uh, of course, we um, – let's see, where are we? Here we go. Uh, the results from last week. Here it is. Uh, we talked about Scotland County took down the Cavaliers 42 to nothing. It was Richmond County. 28-21 over this week's opponent for the Cavaliers, Pinecrest, and that's a game where Pinecrest led 21-7 to in the second mm -hmm. half, and Richmond County was able to come back and, and beat them. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll talk about Pinecrest here a little bit later tonight. Union Pines, 55, Graham, 18. That was the first win for the Vikings. And uh, it was Lee County, 34, Hope County, 6. Uh, this week in the Sand Hills 3A, it's Richmond County at Hope County. Union Pines will be at Scotland County. Of course, the Cavaliers will be down the road here at Pinecrest, and Lee County has the week off. Those are your upcoming games in the Sand Hills 3A, 4A Conference. And we wanted to take a little bit of time here where we do each week. Last week we recognized the senior class, of course, as they were recognized last Friday night at Cavalier Stadium. But tonight we want to focus a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball, kind of uh, based upon the, the, the performance of the whole defense. But really, with the secondary um, last week, um, we had three interceptions. Uh, in the ball game, um, and in a couple of just hard hitting, great coverage plays by all of them. Um, highlighted a lot, and this this is the guys that I've primarily seen most of the action so far: uh, Jeremiah Freeman, Anthony Robinson, Josh Freeman, Brett Tate Blanks, Reggie Butler. Which hopefully I talked to Reggie before the game; he was hoping to get cleared yesterday so we can play again. I don't know if that happened. Yeah, or... yeah. Re Reggie will be back for this week. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, it'd be good to have him back. I know it's, I talked to him for a few minutes before the game, and he was real excited about coming back. And we've also seen Christian Matthews some in the in the backfield. So, mm -hmm. what are and maybe I'm missing somebody, but what are some of your thoughts about some of these guys and how your secondary has progressed over the last few weeks? Uh, we would definitely, you know, when we lost Reggie due to to, to the concussion, um, you know, protocol and, and having a concussion being out, we we play with some different pieces and different guys in different spots and. Um, you know, Jeremiah Freeman was originally a, a offensive player last year, last spring. He was strictly offensive, but um, you know, we made it. We saw him perform when we had our scrimmage this year, mm -hmm. and we was like, "Oh, he got to play. He has to play defense." Mm -hmm. And um, started off with him at safety, and um, you know, we we felt like he could do it, but it just wasn't the right fit. So this week was actually the first week that he played corner. Mm -hmm. And um, you, I say he had a great show in that corner, you know, to come down with two interceptions. Yeah. Um, Anthony Robinson was another guy back in the spring who strictly only played offense. And, you know, we sat down and we say, oh, he's he definitely has to go both ways for us as mm -hmm. well. Um, he's another guy came over the interception, and it, it wasn't an easy pick. No. Um, it actually juggled and bob bobbled, and he, he caught it on the way to the ground. Mm -hmm. So it was a great play um, for him. And, and um, like I said, having Reggie back, is, is kind of like the, the the solid piece that, that we've been missing, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, going going into this week. And, and obviously Josh Freeman, who has been uh, holding everything down back mm -hmm. there and kind of been the guy in charge and constructing um, everybody and lining everybody up. And um, and, and also BJ, who's, who's just a freshman, um, you know, once he gets a little bit more comfortable with things, he, yeah. he'll be able to, um, you know, be really contribute uh, as well as as he's already been doing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, having a guy like Christian that can come in and back up any one of these positions at safety right. or corner is a plus as well because he can come in and he knows how to play safety. He knows how to play corner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you know, primarily focusing looking at him on on, on offense because we right. felt like that's where he's going to help us the most at um, right now with the type of offense that we've transitioned to. Sure. Yeah, he had some really good runs in that mm -hmm. last game yeah. that we had 
um, at uh, South Johnson towards the end. So that's a good bright spot. And again, you know, some of these guys got to really stay in shape with having yeah. to go both ways. You know, both receivers and in the defensive secondary. So uh, uh, great job by this uh, Cavalier group, especially this past week. And we'll talk a bit more about that here after the break. We're going to go and take a timeout and hear from our sponsors. We'll be back with more with Coach Mike McClure right after these messages. Coaches Show Sponsors. Wilkinson Chevrolet. Domino's. Farm Bureau Tramway. Sheriff Tracy Carter. Fix It Plumbing. Jones Printing Company. Brick Capital Video. back to the Coach Mike McClure Show. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. We did start a half an hour early uh, this evening, but we'll go back to 7.30 uh, next Tuesday night and then just a reprogram uh, announcement again uh, on Tuesday, October the 12th, uh, the two weeks for tonight, I believe that is. Uh, the Cavaliers will be remake. We're making up the Richmond County game. So we will not have a coaches show. We'll have an actual game. So that game will be at 730 as mm -hmm. well. Okay. 730 kick on Tuesday the 12th. Um, we'll be at Richmond County. And once again, that's a makeup from the game uh, from September the 17th. So I look forward to bringing you that action then. So now it's time for the, the show where we go through our players of the week. And uh, uh, offensively, you know, we didn't have a lot of movement on the offensive side of the ball Friday night. But obviously this is someone that we've had a, a select before. And, and uh, he just does continues to do a great job for us. So we went with our Nor uh, WWGP Norman Financial Group Offensive Player of the Week this week is Mr. Anthony Robinson. And, uh, Coach, obviously we just talked about Anthony a little bit on the defensive side of the ball, but he he's so first told what he brings to your offense as well. He does. He was, we was able to get him out. Um, I, I believe he caught our only passes of the night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we was able to get him in space. And, like you say, we were able to get him out on some runs. Um, with, with our jet motion, I believe he had like maybe 30 yards rushing mm -hmm. um, on Friday night. So, just really just, um, you know, he, he's our go-to guy whenever we, we kind of need a play. Um, but teams are start, starting to pick that, pick up on that, so yeah. we just got to find other ways to get him the ball. But very versatile, like you said, in what he can do. And yeah. not only is an offensive player, um, you know, he, he's going both ways. He's playing playing defense and ke fielding punts and kickoff returns for us, right. which is, you know, great. So just p good to have a player like that that we yeah. can plug in in different spots. Yeah, and like you said earlier, that interception he had in the end zone, uh, near the end zone today was a, a great catch mm -hmm. and a great play as well. So congratulations to Anthony, and I'm sure we'll continue to see him do uh, great things for the Cavalier offense uh, as we go through the rest of the season. On the defensive side of the ball, this one was easy for us this week. Normally we look at all kinds of different players, but this one was easy for us to pick. Uh, Austin Thomas and myself uh, uh, were, uh, I think we had this one nailed down by the middle of the second quarter, to be honest with you, but and he continued to play great ball the rest of the night. So our WWGP Norman Financial Group defensive player of the game for the Scotland County game is, of course, uh, Jeremiah Freeman. He had the two interceptions, um, a couple great defensive plays on some pass plays. Uh, and, uh, again, you can't say enough about his performance this past Friday. Like you say, he's um, he's amped up. He's fired up. Um, you know, he's he's ready to go. He's ready to um, – I, I asked him, I said, you like you like defense better now, don't you? He kind of <laughs> laughed and he's like, yeah, just a little bit more, you know, just because he was, he was able to make some plays and – um, you know, his confidence is, like I said, is up. And as he continues to, to um, you know, do a better job at route recognition, understanding what the receiver's giving him and understanding his zones and his coverage and, you know, how to how to show man and play something else and mm -hmm. just learn a little tricks and traits of a playing corner, um, he's going to be special out there. So, you know, very proud of him and stepping up and accepting the challenge and rising yeah. to the occasion. Yeah, so congratulations to both of these players on uh, being the Norma Financial Group offensive and defensive players of the game. And now, of course, the uh, the big award we give each week is the Wilkinson Chevrolet Coach McClure and Staff Player of the Game. Uh, once again, this trophy right here will be engraved with that player's name for each of the games this season. It'll end up in the Southern League Trophy case at the end of the year. And, Coach, I'll let you go ahead and introduce who is our Wilkinson Chevrolet Coach Mike McClure and Staff Player of the Game this week. Player of the Game we chose is uh, John Wilson this week. Like you say, John, he's just one of those guys that he really doesn't come off the field. Um, 
He's, he literally plays almost every down, every snap. Um, we had to find a way to get him off for special teams just so he could catch his break, but breath. Um, but you know, what I'm saying just a, a a great guy, great kid to have on on the team. Um, finished with seven tackles and one tackle for a loss um, on on Friday, and also did whatever we needed to do needed him to do on the offensive line, and you know, just very solid blocks up front. Um, we, you know, we feel comfortable running behind him and. Like you say, he's just willing to do whatever the team needs him to do because um, that was a big transition for him to ask him to go play guard. And mm-hmm. he didn't want to at first, but, you know, unselfishly, he, he did what the team needed him to do. And now he's excelled and he's he's almost – he probably could be an all-conference guard and, a, and an all-conference linebacker um, by the end of end of the season. Yeah, he provides great senior leadership as well yeah. you know, to a, to a young team. And uh, congratulations to John Wilson um, just, again – Another great week. Um, he's there each and every week, like you said, brings it every week. And uh, it's always fun to watch him, especially on defense. And watching him put, throw some of those good blocks now yeah. is even an added thing. So congratulations to John. Um, and those are all the players of the week for the Scotland game. So now let's take a, a quick look at our opponent this coming week. Um, it's an opponent that we played before but is now part of our conference, of course, as we go down to Pinecrest. Uh, currently the Patriots are 3-2 and two overall. They're 0-1 in the conference. Um, they lost to Richmond County, as we mentioned earlier, 28-21 this past Friday night. Uh, they have two straight losses actually right now going into Friday, and hopefully we'll make it a third, uh, as they lost to Grimsley uh, two weeks ago. Um, they do have a new head coach in Chris Burt. Uh, Chris Metzger, who was there for quite a few years, uh, left to uh, go to another program. So they have a new coach this year. And um, last time we played them uh, was back in 2019 in a, in a non-conference game. Uh, where Pinecrest uh, beat the Cavaliers. So, Coach, what are some of the things you're going to expect to see from this Pinecrest team? Well, you know, uh, kind of like us, they're still trying to find, figure out some things uh, offensively for them. You know, they are, their starting quarterback, unfortunately, you know, got hurt. And so they're, mm-hmm. you know, trying to figure out something and, and run uh, an offense that's comfortable for their for their backup quarterback. So we have to understand that. that so, um, you know, the film that we have on them, they can come out in any anything – um, that we saw, obviously, but I think they just want to kind of try to be um, get their, their their quarterback in some type of rhythm to where he can feel comfortable making mm-hmm. throws and, and comfortable um, in the run game as well. And defensively, we know we're going to have our hands full with their, their defensive end. Their defensive line overall is good, um, you know, but especially on one of their, their particular defensive end, he's – He's um he's gonna be a handful and so we just gotta make sure that we know where he where he's at all the time and mm-hmm. um you know and, and it's gonna be a battle that's won up front um because they're gonna want to come out and try to run the ball and um and they obviously want to send pressure with that that defensive lineman line that they have. Mm-hmm. Is that defense that you're talking about? Is he one that'll switch back and forth on hey, what side? Yeah, that yeah. he's at. Um, I believe he's number nine. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not sure if his name, but I I just know his number. Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be a big night yeah. for uh. Uh, Mr. Judd on that side, and then yeah. uh, whoever you decide to put at right tackle uh, this week will have their hands full. Um, so, yeah, Pinecrest has been a pretty steady program over the years. I know years back they had some real difficulty, and they actually, I think, stopped the program for a few years, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they've been coming back. But obviously the new coach, a lot of, like you said, changes and things. So um, it's going to take a, a real solid performance by the Cavaliers, and I'm sure yeah. you guys will be ready to do that. It is. Like, I, like I've been telling everybody, and I'll, and I'll say it, um, you know, all the pressure is on everybody that we play in conference. There's, yeah. there's really no pressure on us um, coming into the game because you know they uh, each team that we play that they, they can't afford to you know take a night off mm-hmm. against us just because of our record. And I believe that their coaches will uh, enforce that and, and tell them that you know that um, by the way that by what they see on film. So that's why we feel like all the pressure is always on our opponent and never on us. Um, mainly because you know they. They don't want to be the team that that loses to the team that currently has no yeah. wins yet. Yeah. So um, you know uh, that's why we feel like coming in, uh, there's really no pressure on us. Right, yeah. right. And, and we talked to a minute ago. It was it was very impressive to see. I, and we kind of expected it. We had talked about it during the coach show last week. You know, with the kids being off for two weeks, being away from it, being away from the actual action on the field. Mm-hmm. The way the Cavs came out and really, you really put a great effort in, and that's to do with your your yeah. staff as well and getting them to prepared. Um, but uh, I, I expect nothing less this Friday as they come out down at Pinecrest. Exactly. 
So, um, and again, just a quick reminder, after this week at Pinecrest, the Cavs will return home to Cavalier Stadium on the 8th to take on Hope County. So remember that and come out and support these Cavaliers uh, as they uh, continue to improve each and every week and uh, need all the support we get in the fans in the stadium uh, to help support them and have them come out with a win. Yeah, that is homecoming night as well. So oh, that great. Be homecoming. Yeah, so please make your plans to join us at Cavalier Stadium on the 8th. We're going to go take another time out. We'll be back right after these messages. Coaches Show Sponsors Wilkinson Chevrolet Domino's Farm Bureau Tramway Sheriff Tracy Carter Fix It Plumbing Jones Printing Company Brick Capital Video Welcome back, and we hope you've enjoyed listening to the Mike McClure Coaches Show. Coach, again, thanks for the time uh, coming in each week. I know you're a busy, no man, problem. but really appreciate it. No problem. We remind you to join us each Tuesday at 7.30 on 105.5 FM WFJA and every Friday night prior to our games at 6.30 on 95.1 FM and 10.50 AM WWGP. Our Coaches Show is also posted on the WFJA website and Facebook page each Wednesday by noon. We also remind you to check out the WFJA website. Go to sports, then high school football. You'll see all the choice pages to include our results page with complete game articles posted by midnight after most games. Each week, the conference standings, power rankings, schedules for all the teams in the Sandhills 3A, 4A, and up-to-date season stats for the Southern League Cavaliers. We also remind you that next week our coaches show will air at our regular time on Tuesday night at 730 right here on WFJA Sports. We're glad you've taken these opportunities to join us this season for Cavalier football. Good luck to the Cavaliers this week as they take the short ride south to face the Patriots of Pinecrest in Sand Hills 3A, 4A conference action. We thank all our sponsors for bringing you our show tonight. Wilkinson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Farm Bureau of Tramway, Fix-It Plumbing, Jones Printing Company, and Brick Capital Video. And we thank you for listening to WFJA and WWGP Sports. Good night, everyone. Go Cavs! You've been listening to the Southern League Cavalier Coaches Show with head coach Mike McClure and show host Mike Fowler. On behalf of all Coaches Show sponsors, we thank you for listening to tonight's program. This has been a production of WFJA and WWGP Sports.